return of Lion and Yu Yi. World Elite taking on VK. Lion got druided last time out. And Yu Yi is 0 and 3 so far in the event. And it's yet another big match. They're all big matches at this stage because everyone's so close together. But VK a chance to go to 7 and 3 here. And that would put them as the only team on that score at the end of week 5. But should they lose this? I think I seem to have said that every single match this week. But everything will close up. All of the teams are so close together right now. Alright, Lion with the Demon Hunter band. And she's brought no warrior. So she's stuck with Mage, Hunter and Druid. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Yu Yi has lost his Demon Hunter. But he has got a warrior, a Druid and a Hunter. So where he has warrior, Lion has Mage. And that is not really where you want to be in my opinion. But Lion has her reasons. She's been on the game show The Brain, uh, 60 of China's smartest people. And she was invited there after winning the World Championships for Hearthstone. So she has been a little bit out of touch and she's been honest about it. She says she doesn't think she can play the Warrior deck well enough at this point. It's a complicated deck. And she would rather play the decks that she has a bit more control, a bit more feel for. And... We'll see how that works out. It's obviously not where you want to be, but also if you've got that self-awareness to do that, I think it's a very smart decision. Meanwhile, she'll be looking forward to trying to win this first game of Hunter versus Druid as she got destroyed early in the week. 3-0 by Druid. Didn't really get to play any Hearthstone. Yu Yi already in position to make decisions. Glowfly Swarm would just pretty much fill up the board. And put him in a pretty good spot. Would be able to then still overgrowth the turn after and proceed with his life going into turn 7. I can't really see a good reason not to. 6 2 twos here. He'd lose a couple of them. But it seems alright to me. Just because the curve works out nicely, he gets to play the overgrowth into overflow. And who knows, maybe picks up a savage roar and just does a, a whole load of damage. Giving Lion, who's probably sick of seeing turn 3 nonsense from Druids. Problem already. Great pickup though for her here with his Dwarven Sharpshooter. He's going to be able to take down one extra Glowfly because of it if she chooses. How does that mess up her curve though? It messes her curve up quite badly. So not the easiest decision to make here. So looking ahead, she wants to play Rottnest Drake next turn. She wants to play Bran on seven. What's she doing on six? She could play the other dragon on six. She'd be quite way behind by then though. And this is what you hear Cast talking about Hunter not having many decisions but they're important ones these are the spots where that's a thing so she does play on curve this does take down two two twos and the sharpshooter only takes down one and a half if you want to look at it that way even though it takes it more immediately and lion should be okay unless she gets whatever that's in the room with her is sorted it out. No, nope. it's obviously making some noise, whatever it is. She's really not keen on it. Yeah, I'd rather not see. Lion, it's all on you. I'm not going near whatever that is. Right, back to Yu Yi. Decision of which overgrowth to play. He actually has a proper decision here. Now he's picked up his power of the wild. He can buff these glow flies to three threes. Uh, that would defend one of them. He'd be able to take out the 1-1 one, one with his face, maybe. But I don't think... Like, do you think these get it done? That's the question he's got to answer here. He's not even going to take out the 5-4. So he feels like he gets this done next turn. 12 damage, plus potential buffs. Assuming the hunter's not going to be able to deal with it. Well, you can deal with one on board. 
and she can deal with others from her hand, but obviously Yu Yu doesn't know that. But Lion, she'll be terrified. She'll realise that Yu Yi is very unlikely to make this play without some sort of buff for next turn. Druid has enough buffs. And so she's looking to take down everything she possibly can by the look of it. And she sits back in the chair. She's seen this all too often. She's expecting to not make it to the next turn. Is that lethal? We can see 7 on board plus 6 is 13. 13 isn't 16. It's not lethal yet. You, you can shoot down the Swampoos with the crystal power. He can use the Savage Roar and put his face into the 5 1. He can also just hero power and do that. But this is a little bit awkward going back to the decision he made not to ramp. And it's hard to say one way or the other what is right, what is wrong here because he's so close to getting this done. But I feel if he'd just gone for the ramp, then given up on this early glow flies, that by now he'd have drawn a load more cards and would just be doing the druid things that is the game plan. This should be okay. The thing I don't like about this is he's now committed to winning via the way he should have tried to win in the first place so it's like he's gone one way and then another and then back another as lion picks up the perfect card here to get rid of this part of the attack and yu yi hasn't committed to a plan and that lack of commitment to a plan as you see there's no swipe in the deck by the way before you wonder what lion's doing yeah that lack of commitment to a plan is just going to put yu yi in a tough spot and you know that if, if Hunter turns it around, Hunter is going to destroy you in the games where there's no Mount Seller. Lion looking extremely good now for a 1-0 lead. Trying to work out... If he has to bog people first, he doesn't heal them up. I guess. Right. Well, Lion, you've got two turns to win this, because next turn is Mount Seller nonsense. But Lion's kept back the Rot Nest for this eventuality. And you had to use a lot of Nought Mana cards last turn. So it's Mount Seller and hope to roll some Griffins and Taunts. Which isn't that unlikely. Although rolling enough of them to actually win the game is pretty unlikely. There's one. It's not a griffin. In fact, it doesn't kill anything, the Apex Predator here. So not lethal at the moment. If Rotness hits, obviously it is. Oh, but this will do it. Varanus will turn everything into one health. Minions making it extremely easy to get rid of the Mount Seller and the damage to face comes in and Lion has beaten Druid finally and that will be a some relief for her Yu Yi has the purple brain icon despite having lost three times so he must have won three times with a class or something I don't even know how that works okay Warrior versus the Hunter and this is Yu Yi's advantage for me in this matchup that Warrior is available to him. Lion not playing that Warrior. Awesome looking start available here though for Lion. And Hunter can definitely take Warrior down. Because Warrior is a little bit slow to start and when the hunter plays like a face hunter it can just be awkward because it then draws into the the bigger stuff at the appropriate time later on 
it's a twofold thing when you draw your early stuff early in Highlander decks. Getting all this out of the way means that Lions should draw closer perfectly for the rest of the game now. So I think every turn here we'll see her have a, a longish think about what to do with Zephyrus. With a good curve you don't always play Zephyrus this early. So that's what she's looking for. Just watch the wild growth. Interesting. Playing to her deck, not her hand. Looking to get maybe an early you know, Grand Slam or Brand, even though it's not in her hand right now. Let's have a look at her exact list, because that's pretty relevant. It's always relevant, but it's more relevant than usual in this spot. Yeah, she does have the Grand Slam. Um, and then it's all the usual stuff. Dragon Queen, Alex Straza, Siamat, Bran. Well, Yu Yi. Not getting um, a warm all down, which is interesting to me. He doesn't really need to use the Ankar there. Was he chance to get a warm all on the board? I mean, there, there still is, but he's a weapon light now. And sometimes as the warrior, you might need to kill a bigger minion using your weapon plus something on the board. Just get the war more down as a 110, but had the opportunity to have it down as a 1-6 and already injured. I think I'd rather have seen that and keep the weapon charge up on a personal level. Because he's not fighting back particularly quickly like this. And the 1-6 is nearly as hard to deal with as 110. Obviously it's not as hard, but if you start making inroads into the 110, then you're probably making inroads into a into the 1-6, and you're probably making inroads into a 110 as well. And now doesn't have much in the way of removal. He's gonna to have to fight using Corcoran elites to some degree. And Lion with this amazing curve that she's got. Taking it nice and steady. Super pickup though now for Yu Yi. I think we'll see him use the entire turn here to work out exactly what he wants to use these Blood Swarm Mercenaries on. Like immediately on the War Mall as a 3 9 after innovating it just looks good. But one of them would immediately get killed. So he may do that and play the Corp on Elite to take out the 2-3 and then hope to be able to Mercenaries next turn. Otherwise we're just giving them away. And maybe this is the best he's got, it's a pretty good strong wide board. the Grand Slam drawn so it was in the deck and is looking to be a pretty good card with that wild growth that Lion took all the way back on turn two. She can obviously deal with a large amount of this board but is going to struggle a little bit after that. What's the best way she gets to use this faceless is the real problem now. If she uses this face as well to clear a board, she'd be in a really good spot. But she'd like a cheap minion to play the faces on. And so she's waiting on that for another turn. Does have the tracking to help set that up if needed next turn. And her plan now is to survive two or three turns playing the Grand Slam and win that way. Uh, and a Grand Slam, when your opponent has had an Ankar in play, not always ideal, because Risky Skipper can definitely deal with it. But as we can see, Yu Yi doesn't have that Risky Skipper available. But he is pushing large amounts of damage now. This is the advantage of having Warrior available. That 
is a good card. Will cost her the coin if she wants to use with a faceless, but seriously, I don't think she will mind at all. Turns the game on its head for Lion. And if she can remove this warrior, she is going to be set to take down her first win of the tournament. Obviously it's the first week she's played, so she would be one and one with that. But Yuyi's not done yet. Clear the board, get this um, Corsair cash working, get some lackeys on the go. And he will feel like he's in okay shape to be honest, although Lion does have plenty of decent stuff left. His hand looks a bit mediocre for Lion, but the card draw coupled with the board presence and coupled with the fact Yuyi has slowly but surely sunk down to 18 health. It's not a problem yet, but we need to keep an eye on that. So Lion can deal with the Armsmith if she wants to. Now she might be more tempted to deal with it because Dragon Queen Alex Raza next turn looks fantastic. But again, mana efficiency seems to be the order of the day for Lion. Injuring the Armsmith might not be the best idea because of Rampage. Does she mine a Rampage though? The problem she's got is next turn she wants to play Dragon Queen Alex Straza, so she's hamstrung a little bit next turn. So if she wanted to play the Crows of Breath, she had to do that now. That's what the thinking was about. Yugi is going to get his own massive minion now. Oh, 12 Alex Draza. Um, Deathwing. So many new Alex Drazas and Deathwings. Okay, there's one of each. I haven't got an excuse. I just got it wrong. 12 12 Deathwing, though, will be difficult to deal with. Obviously, a Rot Nest would have dealt with it, and it would have had 6 health, so I guess see a Matt as well. So actual Deathwing might be the pick here. I don't I wouldn't be in this position personally, I don't think, on this turn. But you knew where he wanted to be, making this wide board. Got the combo's gone with Varanus for Unleash. And Lions from where she sat thinking she might be dead next turn. We can see that she is probably okay as long as she deals with stuff on the board. But, oh, that's a fantastic pair of dragons for her. Just being able to easily clear up gives that extra bit of safety. Also just puts lethal on the board for next turn. I always say that without actually counting, is it? Yeah, 12 and 10 is 22, plus 2 is 24. Yes, it, it is. Plus 3. It's a load of damage. We knew that. See, when you've got a co-caster with you, you can make a guess like that and they will correct you if you're wrong. But I suddenly realised I'd better check it myself here. Right, Yu Yi. Probably wise to look for lethal with bombs here. But I feel that this game's been played quite strangely by Yu Yi. Could be wrong, but didn't seem to have the sense of urgency after the early wild growth was taken from Lion. And to be fair, she is down to 11. It's not like Yu Yi was tiptoeing around doing nothing, but I don't understand why a few things in this game. The early attack bothered me a lot, I think, when. Could we just play the War Mall? You're looking at like War Mall Challenger likes taking down two two minions. It's, it's kind of what it's for, and yeah, Yu Yu does try and get a bomb to face and succeeds. 
And now Lion has seen the first problematic minion. Plays in the Grand Slam, should clear up. She doesn't really want all these to go face. That might be perfect though. If she's not dead, which she is not, that was perfect for her. Now it's a case of planning a risky skipper turn for Yu Yi. Does that go face? Okay. So he's seen a way to clear this up. I'd have put that into one of the minions, I think. But maybe Yu Yi's decided he's just got to win with bombs to the face. Or maybe he thinks that the bombs will tidy up the board yep he got that right and he's getting the maximum damage to face so that was correct to go face and lion needs to find 11 otherwise She's dead to so many things. It happens right now. Yu Yu has none of those things. He has used both Cork and already. So it's not entirely certain he'll win next turn. But any weapon would be green skinned for four. Uh, Gromash would be four. Twelve cards left, and I think that's three outs. And probably going to need them because. If he doesn't win, he's dead. Brightwing probably provides an out or two. I know, Leroy. But not now, it doesn't. And Lion has Kill Command in hand and the Corrosive Breath. So she will go 2 0 ahead and has dealt with the opposing warrior there. The problem she has had this week with no warrior available for her. And Yu Yu's down to his own hunter, so he's not only got a mirror match, but then he's got the druid match and the mage. Let's see how he plays the mirror and then should he win that. Maybe the mage is okay for him. Maybe the druid is okay for him. So maybe this mirror can launch a comeback. Last Hero Standing works a little bit like that. The match that I will not stop talking about, XHX versus Bunny Hopper, worked like that. Where uh, XHX was 2 0 down but won the Priest Mirror. I don't even know how he won that match. It went on for so long by the end of it, I was delirious. So, can Yu Yi launch a comeback here in the Hunter Mirror? And there's so many sarcastic things that come to mind as not only a caster but a memer about the Hunter Mirror. Uh, but actually with both of them drawing tracking there is quite a lot of thought to go into this. And already, how do you fancy that? Your own weapon, kill your opponent's weapon, so your own weapon should be better. Because you're guaranteed to have one, whereas your opponent might not draw their weapon. But also the Dragon's Bane, good removal. Lion's curve looking pretty decent at this point. Yugi's curve not so much, but maybe the card quality is a little bit higher. Yeah. I would want to be on Dragon to win this. Dragon? Lion. So many dragons in hand to win this at this point. Just through a choice of the weapon, to be honest. So Yugi. Again, filling out the curve reasonably well here. Corrosive Breath, not amazing or anything at this point, but if you can get to a situation where he's got anything at all to do next turn, it should be okay. Just checking any differences in the decks here, to be honest. few more dragons maybe for Yu Yu. Not even sure about that actually. Uh, choices though for Lion here. 
She gets to just shoot down the opposing minion or play her weapon. And she only gets to do one of these things. So this is actually quite an important decision. I think the Stormhammer, because of that, is actually better. Even though normally your value, the play she's made here, is better. Because I don't think she uses any mana for the next two or three turns either way. Getting the Stormhammer out might just provide better timing for her. Yugi's considering whether to use the coin here. But this messes up the rest of his curve. Maybe just deciding to hang on in there should be okay. That's the thinking, I think. Uh, I guess he wanted the big minion on the board as well. Yeah, this, um, I'm just looking at the frizz more and more. I think it's okay. It's entitled to draw a low cost minion. You always think about the high cost stuff in Highlander decks, but actually. The Hunter isn't that top heavy, so playing to draw a low card, plus with tracking in hand, sure, this works. And so does Lion's decision last turn not to play the weapon. She's going to get a lot of value right here. So she can do this pretty much how she likes. Obviously that's um, a worrying statement to make, but she has so many ways of doing this. Getting the hammer developed again, just finding time to do everything. And she found time to get both these things into play. And you now have to decide whether to use a rot nest on this. Whether to play the big old whelp and just keep the, the decisions coming. Don't really want to rot nest a 1 3, but he may also find he doesn't get much better opportunity. The board is going to start getting a bit wider from this point on. And sometimes you just forget the text and the cards and play them because they're good cards. Does have that option now of course to worry about Zixor Prime. So you can work backwards which is something I talk about a lot. Eight mana there. So what do you want to do with seven and six and then by elimination you find out what you want to do this turn. I think I'm leaning towards the well but I'm not going to be at all critical if he goes the other way. I don't think I'd like to see Griffin and Breath, let's not do that one. Welp gives more options for next turn. Should still trade into the 1-3 most of the time. And if you get hammered, then great. That means that Lion had 4 mana and didn't do a lot this turn. Lion now has the same problem. How to most efficiently spend her mana. And this just looks perfect. Assume she'll tank you. No, she's not taking her face. Because she doesn't have the the dragon, obviously. Makes sense. And this turn might just be a clumsy old turn for Yu Yi. I do sometimes wonder about leaving Zigzor up, but four is so much damage. It's leaving it on the board so your opponent can't draw the prime. Doesn't matter here because it's going to be dead next turn anyway, so Lion's going to draw it before turn 8, the, the turn where you play it. It'll be dead by then anyway. But sometimes, in situations where it's win or lose the next turn or two, if you can leave up the prime, um, you 
can do so. Sorry, the Apex Predator, you can do so. Yeah, this is the turn I expected to see. The, when I said it was going to be sort of just a nothing turn of clearing things up. CMAT's made this a lot more possible, of course, because you, you should be able to deal with things next turn. And it may just be tipping his way. If he gets to turn 8, obviously it's tipped his way. And with CMAT bridging the gap, I don't see how Lion gets the advantage here. Huh? Well, there's the card that gets you the advantage quite nicely sometimes. That'll clear up a prime. And one of the reasons that Zephyrus to me is interesting in Hunter is I feel like it's the deck where Zephyrus actually plays with its intended purpose, which is use it on a rainy day, get into trouble and use it to bail yourself out. And use it very with much versatility. Obviously we saw Lion previously just use it to get a wild growth, which ends up being fantastic for her later on, getting that early in the Grand Slam down. And I feel that this was the point of Zephyrus, whereas it's often just included in decks now as a win condition at the end, which I, f I mean, use cards how they're there. If they're there to be, if they do the thing, do the thing with them. But I, I do feel that this is the intended use. And it looks, it's so much more interesting when cards are used their intended way. I guess that's not always true. I guess there's sometimes that cards are used in very weird ways that turn out to be fun. Trying to think of an example, but there are many, I'm sure. Lion doesn't have much of a way this turn to do anything useful and get rid of his Siamat. But she is holding on to the Zephyrus, I think that's important. Because she's going to need that to get, for instance, a Brawl next turn. She never seems phased, Lion. It's either fun or concentrated. It's never salt. I mean, being the world champion helps with that, I guess, but... She also very rarely looks stressed about things. And she played in... Uh, Master Sword Yongshipping we saw on screen there as well, and... Again, she just rarely looks stressed, whether it's going well or badly. Flame strike and take damage. She is starting to run out of stuff. And while I was waffling on there, I had neglected to mention the Grand Slam that Yu Yi has picked up. He's in a fantastic position now. I think if Lion doesn't pick up Alex Straza next turn, she's probably going to have to get it done with one of the other two decks, the Druid or the mage. Both of which are unfavoured, I feel, but also both of which can definitely win. Particularly the druid, but... Yeah, it might get awkward for her here. And that's assuming she loses here, but it's starting to look... Right, well, it is bad. She's dead next turn. So I would say that's bad. It's going to be two games to one. Checking I haven't missed anything here from the Grand Slam, just wiping her off the board. I haven't. Raven would be happy. He talks about this a lot as a way to win the game. But you've got to have the clear, empty board, which is the part that I find hard when I'm playing this deck. But Yu Yi hasn't found it difficult. Nicely worked out and goes to one game to two. Getting a win on the board there. Lion's got to choose between her mage and her druid. I don't know the tiebreaker rules for sure, but I'm pretty sure if it's like any other Chinese events I've cast that... Just for a second I thought it was Demon Hunter, excuse me. Like it's Highlander Hunter and there's a curve. I'm like, oh, Demon Hunter, but Demon Hunter doesn't have an animal companion very often, let's face it.
Right, so let's see how Lion goes about doing this. She's just going to kill things as they appear, I think. Just the usual way. Try and get to that mount seller and sell some mounts. Now, in this position, we saw. Oh, it's against the Warriors, so it's not equatable. But Yuji has the curve available, and against Druid, you have. A timer, which is their turn 7, which is sometimes real life turn 4. And so curving up perfectly is the name of the game. You don't need to prepare for your big things later on by getting a wild growth, because there is no later on. This actually isn't a very good glowfly swarm. It would be 3, there's no point. So yeah, saving the Zephyrus for a potential bloodlust for instance. Although we may see it just played next turn for picking up a two mana minion and going wide. I'd like to see that if, if you he whiffs here. He doesn't whiff. It is still an option. To Zephyrus into Bloodfen Raptor. But no real point. It would have well I don't think it would have been correct. But it would have put an extra three attack on the board. However, the shapes of the minions would not have been ideal for this. And Zigzor, Apex Predator, is really good at dealing with this. And so is Zephyrus. So, quite obviously all correct here. Nicely worked out. And Lion facing down a lot of damage really early as Druid. Not where she wants to be at all. And one more turn before things really pick up. Been interested to see what Yu Yi would have done had that just been a new Grand Slam or something he picked up instead of Zixor. I'd like to have seen that play. Yeah, Lions got another Glowfly Swarm, and this is one of those situations in Hearthstone where you know you're up against it, but you just count and hope. And actually, she's nowhere near dead here, and of course, she's playing Swipe in her deck. There's decent chances of her doing something with his hand. She's going to mount set up, you would think. She only has two spells to use if she does, though. How does the swipe work out? It kills one minion, and then all the trades kill everything, and she's left with a 2-2. Two -two. Gives her a chance to pick up that's assuming she doesn't use her face or oh, Moonfire, I think. So she's choosing to keep a 2-2 now as opposed to a Mystery Minion next turn. Sure, that's fine. And although she's not winning next turn, she has a lot of cards to pick up that help. And also, she, if she can buy one turn where she gets to play this Overflow, then she probably wins effectively the turn after that, although Hunter does have some direct damage, obviously. So see him at what rush wind fury. Would leave it as a 6-2. You know that's getting shot down a lot of the time. So rush divine shield. I always try and find the option that isn't Rush Divine Shield, but it's almost always correct. Oh! Going for Wind Fury Divine Shield. Okay, so not scared of the damage and just putting it there. It's quite cheeky. And actually is really, really good here because it plays around this overflow very nicely. And although it can be dealt with Lion, what, what Yu Yi has done with this play is he has forced her to use up a lot of these cards that she would rather use next turn. So the Mount Seller will now not be as good. That was really tidy. And she's ended up having to use the minions to kill it off anyway. 
So instead of having a 6-2, which got taken down quite easily, Yu Yi forced Lion to use way more resources as Brand is picked up and Lion takes another 8 to the face. Well, she has a lot of the things, but this is going to need to be one pretty amazing mount seller. It's going to be a big mount seller. So she's getting all the information before deciding whether to wrath or to play the overgrowth plus the excess mana. Because she needs to know if she's going to get a griffin, if possible. And then she can decide whether to use the three damage spell. She can also cycle it and sort of split the difference. That probably doesn't end too well. Didn't hit another spell, but did get rid of a minion. Did make it so that King Crush can't get through. King Crush is a beast, so kill command would be lethal. Rock Nest is tempting, but... Not really. Is Yuyi dead next turn? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. He would be dead to a Savage Roar, which isn't there. And he wouldn't be dead to a Savage Roar. Especially given that the absolute worst case is he gets the 1-4 off the board. So yeah, with where I was going with that is that he can afford to play the Dragon Queen. How does he do? Huh. Another Dragon Queen, or do you want to kill the four health minions? Okay. So he's not dead, but usually passing into a uh, Mount Cellar is really horrendous news. And what's horrendous news for him here is actually that Lion is just going to play a Mount Cellar. I embark up her current Mount Cellar. Or is she going to Alex her own face? Or can she win with Alex? So she Alex's her own face and Iron Bark's a Mount Cellar. She can clear up basically everything here. And has another Mount Cellar to stabilise with. So she's relying on this. Okay. Oh, unleash with Veranus. Is that lethal? It's not lethal, but it's. Yeah, just take a moment, Yu Yu. He's playing very straightforward a lot of the time for me. Because obviously, Veranus unleash. Yeah, and I'm glad he's taking this moment. Because we've seen he's quite capable of making good plays, but we've also seen him just play a little bit quick and do the obvious thing sometimes. So, he has a lot of choices. Veranus and Unleash looks good, but it's still good next turn. And he can use it for lethal, so there's the opportunity to play Alex Straza here. And that's why he's thinking, and I like the thinking. I don't even know which option is correct, I just like that he's considered that there is a choice here. And this is one of the downsides of it. Alright. So Lion is back in trouble. In this back or forth, back and forth game of the Druid. And that's as much salt as you'll ever get from Lion. Just a little sigh and mini eye roll. And it's going to be two all. And she's left with a mage. Which is not a fun matchup. Yu Yi has negotiated his way through this. The well, lion's still dead on board at the moment. She's just double checking. So we get to game number five, Yu Yi. 
on the comeback, ready for a reverse sweep. Lion down to just her mage now, not the ideal deck to be taking on the hunter with. And she needs that early game. She's got a little bit, but not really enough there. Um, just the Frost Nova is a bit of a speed bump. Yu Yi, though, has no early game. So, okay. Yu Yi has lots of early game, so the Hunter should be able to get that early damage in. And it's also crucial in this matchup that the Hunter gets the early damage. Uh, the late damage becomes quite easy to get with that hero power. And, you know, things like Kill Command and so on. Potential lifesaver here, though, for Lion. She has Zephyrus, so it's the card you want as mage against Hunter. You've got to stop things going wrong in a hurry. But now the big question, is she going to choose Backstab or is she going to choose Wild Growth? Backstab would leave her in a really favourable looking board state. But Wild Growth plays into not just the hand that we can see, but the 8 drops and the other expensive cards that she has in this deck over which are so important. And so she has selected to go for more mana. And in the short term, this is going to be quite painful for her. Uh, but in the long term, it is going to get her into the important cards, Blizzard, etc. Um, Yu Yi knows it's wild growth. The second his battle mage didn't get backstabbed, uh, he knows it's wild growth. The other options from Zephyrus would be Animal Companion or maybe Brightwing. And he knows that Lion hasn't got the time to mess around with cards like those. So if he's not getting backstabbed, it's Wild Growth. And if Lion's taken Wild Growth, he's got a free turn here to take advantage of. Not much in it then between shooting down the Zephyrus or just playing the 2-3 and trying to fill out some late game curve. And I wonder if he'll take a Sira here for 5 points of late damage. The Spellkin's also an option for turn 6. There are some decent one mana spells for Hunter and that is what he goes with quick think of whether to trade but feels that Lion he doesn't mind if she takes the value trade here to be able to push another 4 to face and actually she just trades into the biggest attack minion she can find Yu Yi an interesting choice here between 2-2 two, two drops because the Felmore it's quite a damaging card, or get that Dragon's Bane down that will likely survive and allow him to start pinging away for potentially seven a turn. Especially with like Bone Wraith and things in the pool here for the Mage next turn. Five potential damage, that would be good, but he is going to go wide, go with the Felmore. It's early enough in the game he feels that this could get some damage done. Just connecting to face once for five might well be enough. But now Lion is going to be able to begin her comeback. Starts to tidy up the board and Hunter is restricted pretty much because of the mana costs to only one card per turn from this point on. Blizzard next turn, coin power of creation, she's just drawn on the turn after. Maybe she can stabilise this, especially with Frost Nova available to her as well. Um, don't want to be the one who talks about you know playing puzzle box early all the time, but getting into that Caligas, getting a puzzle box might be a big deal. But although you you can only play one thing per turn currently, they are big things. Big old whelp is a big old whelp. Right now for lion. Choice between the mana saver ping, which is okay. Or just blizzarding, which is also seemingly okay to me. Mana Saber does have some upside. Don't ping yourself, that's it. Spectator client sometimes scares me with those animations. But now you, ye. The Felmore's hit face. The Dragon's Bane is going to be absolutely gigantic for him. Like. It's so nice when you don't care where the hit goes. Either you just almost kill Lion or you kill off her Mana Saber and you can see her... She's just stuck here now. The Seamat's nice, but it doesn't do much. It allows her to pick off the Dragon's Bane, which must be killed. Like, you can't Blizzard here. 
Otherwise, hero power just hits you for seven and you haven't dealt with the problem. So, Lion has to deal with the Dragon's Bane here. And yeah, you see the look on her face. She knows this is done. She's having to leave up six attack versus Hunter and she's only on 11. Um, just not quick enough, even with the wild growth, to keep up. And this is going to be lethal. Corrosive Breath actually can be shot at your own minion, I believe. And that will do the three damage required to your opponent. And Yu Yi, a nice spot there. Corrosive Breath on his own minion for lethal. And Lion, still to get a win in the tournament. But Yu Yi, coming up strong. <laughs>